asked now for 43 years. I'm all still on. asking. <coughs> uh, need to keep the fire burning yeah. all the time. Don't Amen. let it go out. Keep That's it burning. Fine. Whatever it takes, keep it burning. Keep it burning. Come on. Come on. My wife can't sing today, so I asked her to testify. You see, oh, testify. I just like to say that I love the Lord tonight. Feel a good spirit here tonight, today. <laughs> I feel a good spirit here, and it's good to see Brother Billy again and his wonderful wife. Uh, we've been listening to him on CDs just yeah. about once a month, two or three times during the month. <laughs> but uh, we really enjoy it, and I uh, hope you guys continue the good work. Amen. Good work. I guess I have to keep this or your wife pick me up there. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't have to hold this, do I? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't have to, but I don't want to pick you up near as good. But. Oh. You get the clip on it. Will it pick me up without it? I don't know. I, I don't know either. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll use it. I've never seen a preacher do like a microphone. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I use it where a pale mic I got My hands got to be free for me to. Minister. We got a lapel mic. If you got a minute to set it up. Oh yeah. Let's go ahead. I'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Lord is sweet to us. He saved me back a long, long time ago. And uh, back in that Durham, North Carolina, 1969, I went for our fifth Sunday meeting. The Lord got a hold of me. And as far as I know, I haven't backed up one inch ever since. I've been going on dogmatic, strong for the Lord. And I love Him. He keeps a blessing me. keeps seeing miracles. And I've got the testimony. I evangelized for all those years, 21 on the road. I've never taken up offering. I've never asked for an offering. And I've been, I haven't been wanting for anything. The Lord's provided all the needs. So all them pastors and evangelists and all, I tell you, you got to beg for money. I have never begged for money. And my kids have always had and I've always had. So the Lord will provide. But sometimes you think He's not going to. I've been empty on gas. I run out of gas. But He provided. Are we ready to set up some? Okay, we'll get straight now here in a minute. Put that to your tie. Put that to your stick in your pocket. Okay, I'll sure do that. All right, we're getting set up. Are we coming through about right? Amen. Boy, how sweet is the sound now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I tell you, I think that Brother Billy is a miracle. I've known him before he become a preacher. <laughs> and to take him from where he was to where he is, a genuine miracle. And I was so happy about 10 years ago we heard you singing on that. Uh, Lou and my daughter had went up to Owensboro and heard him sing up there. Some singing. And man, I said, Lord, that can't be Billy. <laughs> but it was. Uh, God had worked a miracle. Uh, and yeah. he sings a song about his lifestyle uh, before. Yeah. So I thank God I'm here. I praise God for one thing, that he does go out and put this thing put the message of the Lord out. The little old church like this put the message all over the world. And I'm Amen. for it. I don't care yeah. how you get the message out. Get it out. Yeah. And uh, don't give up. Just keep going on because that's the way to go. Am I going okay? Yeah. Sir. Everything all right? Okay. <laughs> We're getting in the words here this in a minute. The Word of God is powerful, sharp than any two-edged sword. It cuts going and a coming. And it has been a comfort to me ever since I started out. I yeah. started out, I couldn't read. But I would read okay <laughs> until I went to a church and the Lord let me read the Bible of what He wanted me to read. Oh, but I would read the Bible anyway. <laughs> uh, I would go down through and I would say, Ann, yeah. you, you, <coughs> in, at, the. Come on. I was reading the Bible, wasn't I? Yeah. I was doing 100%. Come on. What the Lord wants us to do, be truthful. Right. And if we're truthful, He'll help us. Come if on. we kind of be halfway truthful, He can't help us at all. Yeah. We're about 20, 30, 45, 50 percent. He can't. 80 percent, He can't help us 100 percent. He can help us 80 percent. So get them in your mind. If you want the Lord to help you all the way, you've got to go all the way. On. And the only way we can go all the way is just get down honest for the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Well, I've seen a couple of people what not singing, Brother Winford. Do you not put your guitar up? It's back there. Can I play yeah. this guitar? Play it there. Yeah. Oh, it's back here. Yeah. Hey, I'm going into the tomb. Oh. <laughs> Lazarus is coming out. Yeah. Amen. I had to sing this little song. My wife always sings, but she she's fighting a battle right now. Shoot, this thing's hooked up to something. <laughs> 
I pick him. Just bear with me. I hope we're not in a big hurry. No, come on. I'm only a 30 minute preacher once I get into the work, so don't worry too much. But I want everybody, you know, they say if, if they can learn the words, they sing a song with me. So I want everybody to sing the song before we quit. That's called unity. Amen. Unity is so powerful right. that the devil cannot stop it. Because he fully don't understand unity. And anything you don't understand, you don't like. Come on. <laughs> you just don't like it. You just don't understand it. But once you understand it, you'll begin to like it. So unity is good. So that's what we're going to do. We're all going to start singing the same song because we're Christians. Now, the sinners can't sing this song. They will be able to sing it sooner or later, but they can't sing it right now because these words are for Christian words. <laughs> I'm so glad and I'm so glad and I'm so glad. I'm so glad and I'm so glad and I'm so glad. I'm so glad and I'm so glad and I'm so glad. I'm so glad and I'm so glad and I'm so glad. Now we got them words. I'm so glad and I'm so glad and I'm so glad. Yeah, you are. I'm so glad and I'm so glad and I'm so glad. I'm so glad and I'm so glad. Just think of what you're glad about. Glad you got saved to start with. Amen. Glad you're in church today. Glad you're Come above on. ground, not below ground. Yeah. Glad you got one more opportunity to serve the Lord, and we need to do that. Thank Amen. you, Winfrey, for your gift to him. Oh, you got one good one here. <laughs> Take care of man's guitar because, man, that, that thing gets to be expensive. Amen. Always we're uh, searching out the Word of God. Don't just read John 3.16 and quit. Because it can come better to you, more stronger to you every time you read it. Come on. Don't read one thing or hear one person say something and think that's all of it. No. Christ Gospel don't have it all. The Southern Baptists don't have it all. Come on. GOA don't have it all. Billy Douglas doesn't have it all. Amen. I got it right that time. Got it. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Ooh, boy. But I'll tell you who got it all. The Holy Spirit. Amen. And some people think you're going to put the Lord in a box. You can't put Him in a box. Come on. You can't make a doctor out of anything in the Bible. You only can bring the Word of God out and let the Word of God, the Spirit of the Lord, not that Word of God, and it becomes real to you, and that's the only thing you can live by. Amen. A lot of people live them because their aunt and uncle told them something, or because their pastor told them something. If you don't get it, you're going to think right down out that road somewhere, you're going to think. But if you get it for yourself, get Come it down in your heart, yeah. and Come it on. becomes real to you, and it becomes fruitful, then you'll be real good shape when it Amen. becomes fruitful. I think the best policy that a Christian can have is to be honest with themselves for sure. Right. But you need to be honest as you can be with everybody. Right. I know Brother Hinton one time he says, man, that's the ugliest baby I ever say. Well, you don't have to be that honest. <laughs> <laughs> he got in trouble. <laughs> But we need to be as honest as we know how to be. Right. If we want to have a powerful tool to the enemy, it's more powerful than the A-bomb, and more oh. powerful than the, the sonic bombs they got nowadays. And if Iraq think they got a strong weapon, Israel's got a stronger weapon if they turn to Jesus Christ. Oh. As they say, they got a stronger weapon because Amen. all the Lord has to do is move one wire and that bomb can't do nothing. Come on, right. <laughs> Don't you think our God can do that? Yeah, Amen. if we get honest before the Lord in our little problems that we've got, not speaking of this world's problem because this world is full of problems and if right. you tackle every one of them personally, you'll go crazy. Come you on. will not be able to handle it. Amen. My brother-in-law sick, my little sister, little Betty, I've called her all my life because there's three Bettys in our family and uh, she was the little one, so I called her little Betty when I was a kid and uh, don't do this when you get a dog. When I was a kid, I called the other Betty Broken and the other Big Betty. <laughs> and my, my, my oldest uh, brother, 
his wife was named <coughs> Betty Jo, but I always called her Big Betty because she's the biggest of the three. <laughs> and little Betty was the littlest. So, so if I take that in my heart, and it's not to the Lord. Now, I'm talking about in my heart. And trying to whip it yourself, trying to figure out how, and trying to get something figured out, how come this happened. You will not make it. You'll go oh. down with them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just don't go down with them. Let's get ready and, uh, and uh, give them more to the Lord. I was preaching for a doctor up in, in uh, Farmington, New Mexico. He was uh, specializing in delivering babies. And, uh, but he doctored the Indians, and the Indians come to him, and he would talk whatever he could get from the Indians. But we was in the hospital that day, telling you how far stretched things can go. <laughs> and he said, Gio, I've got a woman in labor. This people's fixing to leave. They want the baby dedicated before they leave the hospital with it. Would you dedicate the baby? I said, yes, I will. And I went over and I talked to them a little bit and told them all about the dedication and how come we're doing it and everything. This don't save nobody, but this is puts them into the uh, uh, amount for a day have dedicate the baby to the Lord. So therefore, I charge them to you know and go ahead and raise it up in the in the way that the Lord will have it be raised Amen. up. And it wouldn't part from them. And he delivered that baby. We went to get a cup of coffee, but something else happened. We got halfway done with a sandwich and a cup of coffee, and he had to go again to do something. He said, Jill, he said, I got some meetings down here in Ward so and so. I forget the name of the ward. He said, Their grandmother is 103, and they're keeping her alive by prayer. Will you go down there and convince them to turn them over to the Lord and let them go home to their reward? I said, I'll try. So I went down there and I talked to them and I said, You love your grandma. And they said, Great grandma. I said, You love your great grandma. Yes, I said, You love your. And got talking to them and I said, This is what she would want to do. She is wanting to go to the Lord, but you're all keeping her here. So won't we all pray and say, The Lord, come and get our mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. And they all prayed. Within about ten minutes, she went to be a the Lord. Amen. So we seen one come and dedicate it, and one to a celebration to the Lord. One day, Amen. that was something, I tell you. Amen. If you stay around a while, you can see all kinds of things. Amen. I don't have a clock back there. <laughs> One guy took a clock down and put a counter up as one guy just kept preaching and preaching. <laughs> That's the way of some of the Pentecost preachers. But I, I mix, I tell them I mix somewhere around somewhere. <laughs> I said, I started, so I've been Southern Baptist, I've been with the Methodist, I've been the Christ Gospel, I've been with the full Gospel. Man, I tell you, I'm just glad to be a Christian. Amen. But I, I, I glean for every church I ever go to. I glean from this church tonight. I have been for a long time with your music and with your preaching. But there's things like testimonies you'll take with you for the rest of your life. Come there's on. things like somebody stood up as Wimper did and testified about how, how the devil was fighting him. And you take that and if the devil starts fighting you say ha ha whimpered one and if that little bow legged boy can win yeah, I start to die. Amen. Amen. So we clean for many things. <laughs> That's what I did with when the God healed me of emphysema. That old devil tried to put it back on me four or five times. Yeah. But there's a little old lady in church, and, and she can learn that you're not like her real easy. But <laughs> and she had got healed of asthma, and she stood on it. I said, if she can, I can. Amen. And, uh, and I had. And, I, and the emphysema hadn't come back. But they wouldn't take me off that. What's that name, that stuff? No, I know the name of the company. The, the name of the disease. COPD. COPD. But my doctor, when right now, about four years ago, he took me up. He said, you do not have emphysema. You do not have COPD. So he took me up of it. So Amen. I thank God for healing me. And it's impossible to be healed of that. Impossible. We go to the uh, book of Matthew, the 15th chapter and the 21st verse. I know it's being possible for anybody to be go to church as long as most of y'all have to hear something new or read anything new in the Bible. I, I, you and I both can't hardly just read, and read something. It don't seem like you just read it yesterday or the day before yesterday because we're Bible readers. If we're not, we turn on the tape player. Before I could read the Bible, I had it on a reel-to-reel -reel tape. <laughs> so we were getting all them tapes from Sister Hicks. And I had the Bible on tapes, and I got on a record, and then I got it on a eight track, and now I got it on a CD. Yeah. My whole big old 
almost whole wall lights up with the Bible. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, there is hardly any of us Christians hadn't read the whole Bible. So there's nothing too much new except when the Spirit shows you things that will bring more victory. Come on. And this word is going to talk about the truth. Let us pray and ask the Lord bless the Word of God. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for all your mercy and kindness. Thank you for this day, Lord, in this building. We ask that you bless this church body, Lord. And we praise you, Lord God, for your spirit to come down to open up our hearts, Lord. Let us plant this seed into our hearts deep, Lord. Let us fertilize it, cultivate it, Lord, nurse it until it grows into a, a fruit bearing seed. And we praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's. Uh, 21 verse, 21st verse of that uh, 15th chapter. My, on loop. Okay, I, my wife keeps me straightened out all the time. Because even after I learned, went back to school at 40 years old, went ahead and, and uh, went plumb through school, I still have a hang up with that old dumb guy I used to be. <laughs> and I still don't have faith that I can do things as I should have. So I asked my wife, help me out a lot of times. It says, Then Jesus went hence and departed unto the coast of Tyre and some Siloam. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out the same country and cried after him, saying, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, thy son of David. My daughter is grievously fixed with the devil, but he answered her not a word. Now, if we want to have some truth to come out, a lot of times, the Lord ignore your prayers, brother uh, Winford. A lot of times, He ignore your prayers. You don't get too big in the Lord. The Lord will ignore your prayers if He want you to go a little bit farther. See, we got to go a little bit farther sometimes. A little bit farther just down on our knees. A little bit farther this one tier. He wants us to go until we meet what He wants. And He will. <laughs> you ever seen... Uh, uh, a dog, he wasn't fed, and you just ignore him. He, he nibbles a little bit, and you ignore him. Uh, uh, somebody brought a dog over to bed the other day. I guess it's your dog, wasn't it, Nita? And man, you, you couldn't get that thing quit. You ignore him a thousand times. He's still there nibbling at you, barking, you, barking and nibbling. Well, <coughs> sometimes the Lord just wants to see how determined you are. Come on. We as Christians got to get determined to get some things. Come on. And this woman is fixing to get determined. But I, I've never, I'm in West Texas, and I thought they was tough guys. They're rough necks. They do work hard. If people in China and Japan don't think America works hard, let them go down into the oil country. Am dudes work totally hard. They work day and night in the dark, and they work in the mud, in the rain. They work on top of a moray ditch when the wind is blowing 50 miles an hour. They're uh, roped up there and grabbing. Man, they're, they're uh, really working hard down there. So sometimes we just got to work a little hard too. But there, when you get them in church, you, you say, well, you shouldn't be sitting there. You ought to be sitting there. They get mad and walk out. They ain't got no staying power at all. Come you on. better get some staying power. Amen. This day is coming Amen. up. Come on. If you've been going to church and then you don't feel everybody's pleasing you, Come you on. better give some more else. Will you on. get some staying power? Will you yeah. get some word of God that cause you to be able to stand in the last day? Because in the last day, they're coming a great falling away. <laughs> and if it wasn't so, the Lord wasn't putting in there. Right. But you've got to have something to fall away from before you fall away. Right. And if it's a great fall away, you have to have something great. Come on. You're all going to fall away. Well, anyway, Amen. we got to stand up when somebody ignores us. And I know you probably have people say, well, the pastor didn't shake my hand. Amen. Or he didn't say my song. Yeah. And this star oh, puff up. You ain't getting nothing from the Lord. If you're that person, repent and Come hope on. to God you get embarrassed again so you can get a little bit tougher. Amen. Well, Amen. I, I, I love the Word of God because it's, it, it works for us. It, it makes us... What we need to be. Yeah. I have been all over the United States and half of Europe preaching the Word of God. And man, I tell you, I did most of that without anything hardly backing us up or anything. We didn't have no big church backing us up, but we did have Livermore Pentecostal Church, which called a House of Bread at one time. Y'all remember what's called a House of Bread? 
Bethel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, we had them praying for us on Monday night. Well, Monday night was my best preaching. <laughs> Honest to God, we could feel the prayers of the saints. This fat back here says the right thing. Who are you praying for now? Yeah. Who are in this world? I get. Who are yeah. you praying for today? Yeah. And it's got the whole uh, uh, globe up there. But anyway, uh, when you say you pray for somebody, don't just say it. Let's do it. Because you know on. you might be finding yeah. a lawyer and you're yeah. into trouble when right. you be finding a lawyer. You yeah. say, oh, Jim, that's not lying. I was at a yes. convention one time. They told me I'm not lying. I said, it's lying in my book. So come on. Yeah. Don't tell yeah. me you're going to pray for me. Uh, I know I ask a whole lot of people pray for different things, but when I say pray for me, they say, oh, brother, I'm really going to be praying for you. And they don't even remember no more. <laughs> Write it down on a piece of paper for what you're going to pray about. So I'm going to pray. Because we are obligated to do that. Man. And that's how you overcome. That's how you overcome. Come on. I've got muscles now. When I was sick, I didn't have muscles. I work out every day. I work out in my yard. I dig ditches and whatever. And I have got a muscle. I can lift 100 pounds easy. I can press my body weight. <laughs> Man, you know how I got that? Working. And the Come way on. you get your body, the way you get your strength and your muscles in the Lord is by doing these things. Come God, praying is one of them, which Christ gospel people, and that's what uh, your pastors used to. They, they're the prayingest people I ever met, I guess. I've met a couple of pastors could pray more than Christ gospel, but I ain't never met a church. But anyway, that's one of the muscles. Another, when you get all rucked up, you got you look like you're a piece of wheat and you got old, old uh, fuzzy stuff all over you, and I go in and I polish you some of it off. Man, that's making you strong, you know it, because hey, that's getting that weight you're carrying around off of you and then you won't be hurt so bad see I travel around and, and, and preach about education in an old bus I had a 1955 Dodge school bus it was yelling back and that's what I traveled in I pulled a trailer with it and the girl stayed in the bus and I stayed in the trailer well I was at a church in Silver City New Mexico and they asked me they said Gio your bus is not worthy enough it's embarrassing us to be parked in front of the church take it out back to church and hide it where somebody can't see it yeah. <laughs> man I could got mad I said praise God I've been wanting back here anyway that street's pretty noisy <laughs> man, I went back here and quiet. I made a plus out of that thing we need to make a plus out of everything on, yeah. hey, and that man. makes us stronger boy that's, yeah, what, that's what straighten them shoulders hey, oh man. I got a little padding in there that's what straighten them <laughs> shoulders up don't let the old devil give you anything or make some minus you turn around make a plus and hey, just man. he just become like old spaghetti you know he just will stay now, I'll get to this in a minute, I guess. I'm looking for a clock in your head, <laughs> and I, The Word of God is as this ring right here. I didn't wear a ring forever. When we went to Europe, I figured I better put a ring on. <laughs> Let them know that lovely thing belonged to me. <laughs> Word of God is as ring. And the minister. You know God called that minister right there to preach? It's like this. There's no end to it, brother. You can preach anytime, anywhere, but you got to take a break every now and then. So I take a break every now and then. Off God called me to preach. He called me to preach when I didn't have no education and I was broke. I was embarrassed to be several different times. But each one of them embarrassing, I used it for a stepping stone. Come on. And I got stronger and stronger until today. Man, I got the boldness of anybody I've ever met. I haven't met anybody more bold than me. I went to Germany, went down on the streets in the homes and everywhere, preached the Word of God. I preached in Walmart. I preached on the sides of the street and parks all over the country. One park I went to get, you had to get okay to preach in the park. And that old uh, mayor said, now son, I can't let you have that park now. I just said, uh, then you had just give me a lot of excuses. <laughs> I said, mayor, if you was playing us clergymen for all the peace we was keeping, you your, your town would go bankrupt because we're keeping more peace than your uh, surf department's keeping. <laughs> he said, you can have the park. <laughs> I, I went to a, 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 a town in Arizona to get the town hall to be able to have a meeting. They said, oh, we don't rent it out to the Christians. We found out that caused controversy. And, and I said, well, we are not, no, we're not going to cause no controversy or anything. We're just going to be there for three nights. And anybody wants to can come in. No, they won't do. They go out. One, old, one elderly lady over there, we over, uh, about three deaths over, she said, Oh, 
this a minute? <laughs> and she got out, and she got a book out, and she showed them when that land and that building was built by one of the uh, copper tires big shots and he put a claw in there and anybody wanted to use it for religious purpose was free. <laughs> the only thing I'd do is give him $25 for a cleanup closet. <laughs> well I tell you don't get embarrassed when they first say you can't do something. You can do it. But a lot of times it's just like this lady here. The Lord is so ignored him. And so a lot of times everybody ain't going to pat your ball. Gee oh you're such a good guy. They say your, your name is Bill. Bill. You preach uh, my sister my little sister's funeral. Judy uh, funeral. It's not every time that you're going to get to do it that way. But every time that somebody says, oh boy, you can't sing, that is, a, that is a thing to make you stronger than ever before. That's going to make you better before you even get up out of that seat if you say, but the only reason I'm doing it for God or the only reason I'm doing it for the Lord, Amen. I'm not doing it for you, sir. I'm doing it for the Lord. Amen. And it'll make you a better singer than Garth Brooks. That's what Amen. you'll do too if anybody says that. Anytime anybody try to put you down, they're building you up if you use the right thing. So let's use the right <laughs> thing. And it's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. The truth. <laughs> Whimper and lend the saints for the Lord. They're not singing to me. I'm getting blessed from it. But they're singing from the Lord. And if they sing from anybody else, if they're singing from Winfrey and Linda, they're in trouble. And they know all that. And they won't make it. If they make in the world, their soul will be so, so uh, at war with itself. I'm glad y'all sing for the Lord. Don't worry about what other people think or do or say or not. If you do, you're a champ. Come on. Do you know how you'll be perfect? The only way you'll be perfect. Everybody said, oh gee, I'm going to be perfect. Lord wants me to be perfect. I'm going to be perfect. I said, the only way you can be perfect is do what the Lord says. Come on. Then you're perfect. No, <laughs> Read the saying. Word. Do what the Word said. You're perfect. That's what Jesus said. He said, I, don't even, I can't do nothing else except what the Father says. Come on. If we do that, we're perfect. <laughs> I don't care if i got long hair or not. <laughs> Some people think, oh, your hair's touching your ears. You can't be perfect. Oh, you've got a tie on. You can't be perfect. <laughs> if you be honest to this word of God, you're a perfect person. Don't worry. This word is straightening the meanest guy in the world up. Amen. And it has a lot of times. Amen. Amen. Uh, read a couple of verses for me. I don't know where I got to. Number okay. 23. Okay. He, he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread to cast it to the dogs. Now, have y'all been in that embarrassed in that much by your pastor? <laughs> if you did, you have to hightail it out of here. But no. did she hightail it out? No. no. You know how come they're, they're church jumpers? Because God's trying to help them. Every time during God try to help them, they take off and run somewhere else. Come on. And got no over. They be over there about a month, and God sends them somewhere else. And I ain't talking about people evangelizing, missionary workers, and uh, and uh, people that uh, sings for the Lord. There's a lot of people moves around like that. But you know who I'm talking about. If you're here, you know you're here. It's time make a stand. Make Come a stand. On. So I'm gonna get behind Billy. I'm gonna get behind him like nobody else got behind him. They called me mommy's pet. I said, yes, I was. I was a sport brat. You know why? I made sure I was mommy's pet. When I got up in the mornings, I made her coffee exactly like she wanted. And I was younger than this guy. I was about this boy's age. I was made it real young. Is this a boy? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sometimes you don't know. <laughs> he didn't have pink on, so I'll take a chance. I was probably about six or seven years old. I know that I know how hot mommy wanted her coffee. I know what cup she wanted in, and I know how much cream to put in it, and I know this about when she wanted it, and I did it. Come if on. mommy, whatever mommy said to do, I did it. But when I went outside, I did what I wanted to. But in front of mommy, I became that person, and that's what the Lord wants us to do. And then we'll grow in Him. Come on. Now, the pastor gets up and preaches something, or somebody will get gets up and testify, or somebody will call you on the phone and say something that goes to this church. And you say, if that's the way that is, I ain't going back. No, you're going down. That's what's right. happening. You, you better go back. I was counseling with a very uh, prosperous person in New Mexico, uh, White Sands, Alma Girl in New Mexico. And I told that person, I said, you got to go back to that church. 
You apologize to that pastor. I ain't apologize. I think I'm done doing all that. <laughs> and stay there for three months before you leave. Oh, Lord of mercy. They didn't want no more counseling from G.O. Wade. No, sir. You know what I was trying to do? Lift them up before the Lord. And if they went back, and it don't make no difference if you did it or didn't do it. You just, you just put the fire on his head and if you didn't do it, and he accused you of doing it. And then you come out and you say, oh, sorry, Billy. Boy, you you know, I won't mean, think he did it wrong. But if he done it wrong, then the fire on his head, he'll wrap around and say, oh, I'm sorry, too. And then both ball and cry and squeal, squeal around a little bit and you'll both be lifted up. And that's what we need. But we can't give up every time somebody gives us a little wrong cross-sided look. Come on. And if you do, you're not going no father you go down and you'll go down and you go down and pretty soon no advice so where is he is he in church anymore no i haven't seen him in church no more yeah <laughs> we always run out of uh, time before we run out of words so uh and he just got done saying this is the key word right here this is the key word it says and she said true lord <laughs> yet but the dogs done got herself down even with the dogs come on Put herself down even. If you won't whip your old flesh and believe you me, you've got it to the day you until you get the glorified body. If you want to be raised up, you've got to get rid of your flesh. Come on. It can't exist above the Lord. Yeah. And people's got their flesh up here and they got the Lord down there. I I got a little old car. And I drove the other day, went and prayed for several people that was really needing prayer. One of these uh, uh, things I keep doing today. Got, got somebody in contact with me that knowed I could help out their daddy and they called me after they seen a wedding I had preached on the YouTube or something other like that. Anyway, they called me I went up and prayed for him. Man, we're having the best time. Oh, me and my brother, we went to all through Texas and up in Oklahoma and we met some needs of some people. Boy, we took our guitar and I took my banjo in and prayed for these people that's been locked up in their homes and uh, they can't get out. I mean, not locked up, but can't get out of their homes. Boy, we're making their day and I'm floating on cloud nine and a half. <laughs> I drove up in a pastor's house. Y'all, what year is my car? It's a 96. A 96 uh, Geo three cylinder. It's paints faded out on it. The bumper's crushed up on it. Brand new tires on the thing. Gets going up there, it got 49 miles a gallon and 51 miles a gallon. He said, Geo, don't you have any money at all? <laughs> <laughs> you can't let that... Man, that made me feel like a million dollars, buddy, that I whip my flesh down and I can drive any old drunk or car they are into a man's house and feel good about it. I'm feeling good, and I still feel good about it. Hey, and I man. told my wife, that's a keeper. I'm going to keep that thing. That gas get $5 a gallon. He'd be yeah, wishing man. he'd trade that new Dodge pickup off Come and got him a little old Hey, man. <laughs> but don't get embarrassed. You're going to lose it. You're going to lose it. And then say, true. <laughs> just say true Lord yeah. man I'm telling you a lot of times the spirit's working on us through our minister and I know Billy ain't the only one who works here but uh, anyway through your pastor and he's really trim trimming your tree I'll tell you what I've never seen anybody trim a tree better than Brother Hinton would I told, told him once I said if I, Brother Hinton there have been times I had a gun I shot you I mean he took my TV away he, he took my salt away he took my sugar away Man, he made us fast every Monday. Um, he's a full boy. On, he didn't yeah. ask you to fast. He told you to fast. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> but guess what it did? It made a giant out of this old skinny guy. But Amen. at that time I was, I weighed about 105 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> the Lord's getting letting us grow. Now we're learning how to ask. This is how to ask. I said we learn every message you learn how to ask. Humble yourself you will get something from the Lord. If you build yourself up, you're getting zero from the Lord. Come on. Uh, but if we let the Lord call us a dog, or the now it's going to be the pastor or the evangelist or the missionary worker or the one of the five-fold ministries of the Lord, or maybe some little kid. And if that little kid can stir up your flesh, thank God he did, because you're fixing to grow. Come on. Because that was holding you back. Amen. True, Lord. That's what we need to be true. True and honest. We got to be true and honest. Uh, 
after a while, I began to get true and honest about me not really having that. I never was promoted out of a great to another great. They set me from one great to another, but you know how that is when you're not going to school very much, and I was sick a lot. And my mommy, my sisters tell me that she got out in them West Virginia mountains so far that she wouldn't legally have to send us to school because we was too far from any place at the school bus to pick us up. And she did. She got houses back where you had to walk to. You couldn't even get a vehicle to them. And we back in the mountains. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I didn't get a real good education. Well, I, eventually, after I become a Christian about four years, I began to let that not bother me. I was in Seagull Crossing, uh, down here at Central City. And as Brother Shambles was the pastor of that church, the Lord said, if you, you talk about humming yourself, he said, if you take that Bible, burn lad on that Bible stand, I'll learn you to read it. Not only learn you read it, I'll learn you read it for understanding. I ain't moving. <laughs> And Lou turned her Bible, and I turned my Bible about the same place. She get her finger, I put my finger there. I didn't want nobody to know I couldn't read. But I couldn't read, but I was doing it. <laughs> and the uh, Lord's come to me the third time, and I just got so scared, whimpered, and I, I thought the world's going to come in if I didn't go up there. I went up there and told them that. They prayed over it, and from that night to tonight, I had never been uh, embarrassed by not having education. I've got some in some areas right now, but other areas, I'm dumb as can be. But I'm not embarrassed of it. One of these days, I'm going to get the chance for the, somebody to come by and embarrass me on that area, and I'll straighten up on that area. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, well, just, uh, skip along, uh, Lou, if you'll go and read me second. Uh, first Thessalonians. 2.13 uh, The Word of God is helping us all the time. When God's minister ministers, it's helping us. And we need to grow. We need to grow in the Lord. Either we're growing or we're going backwards. You don't stand still in the Lord. Uh, I'm planting a grape harbor. And uh, as the grapes comes up, every year you got to trim them back. If you want to keep grapes, every year you trim back. So it's trimming back. It really hurts us sometimes. But that's what makes us grow. We have done harvest work with apples. Every year you have to cut this limb off so other limbs come on, so more apples come on. If you just leave that limb there, you might get eight apples off of it. If you cut it off and let springs come up around it, you'll get 12, 14 apples off of it. So you trim a tree back every year. Not the dead stuff, the brand new live stuff. You trim it back. Grapes, same way. You trim the live stems back so you can get more grapes the next year. And so the Lord's been trimming us back. He has trimmed on me until about like Winford say, I will quit. I've quit jobs, Winford, for the Lord. I've quit this and I've quit that when I did post and I had to repent and get them back and do them. But I hadn't, as far as I know, done anything. And Winford didn't say he backslid. He just did. I was three days without knowing if, I, if God exists or not after I become a Christian. But after that, thank God's good. He keeps us going. Can you read that? For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually work of also in you that believe. Now, it's not receiving from G.O. Wade or Billy Douglas or, or Billy, Bill, Bill Wills, Willis. Willis. No, yeah, that's right, Bill Wills. I'm hard on name. But to receive him from the word of God. When people get up, and, I, and I'm going to include this into it because I think this is great wisdom. And this is very good knowledge to have with you when you go to other churches or when other preachers come by. You will not, at no time that I know of in my life, receive 100% of whatever the preacher is preaching. Yeah. But you will receive 5%, 30%, 60%, and, and you take that. Because the whole thing is not there. No man got the whole thing. Come you on. take that twenty percent here, and the next day uh, somebody will come by and say something to you as a testimony down at IGA, and you get ten more percent of that. And then the next Sunday, your Sunday school teacher will teach something, and pretty soon you got the whole thing. The Lord is not going to drop the whole thing on you. You're not worthy of it. What he oh. wants to do, he wants to drop a little bit and see if he can trust you that little bit. He'll drop some more, see if he can trust you that little bit. Oh. You say, oh, Lord, trust me if everything. Yes, once he gets all your flesh gone, he can. But he, the reason he has it, because you're not, God, oh, that, you're not ready for it. So they were thanking God for that, uh, for, the, for them receiving, not through them, but through the Spirit. Yeah. 
Amen. Uh, I'm going to go for one more scripture. Let's go to the book of Mark. Let's see. Mark 5, 28. I carry my Bible when I'm out. I carry it like this. I carry it just like I hug up my wife. Your Bible should be a precious thing to you. I've got so many I can't even count. And i got Bibles laying open all over my house. And I will stop and look at them every now and then. It might not see very much, but I'll stop and look and say, and he went forward. Hey, man, I'm going to go forward too. You know, this is encouragement like that. So keep your Bible handy. Keep it open. I've got 60 different translations. That's not very many compared to over 400. I only use the King James. I've wrote some bio, uh, books, some pamphlets, and uh, some tracts on different translations, some of the things they got in them that scare you to death. <laughs> yes, the devil will eventually take the Bible out if we're not watching. Come He'll on. take it out a little bit at a time right. until the book of your reading won't be the real Bible. <laughs> he's, not, he, he's smart enough to come in and take your Bible right now. He can't do that, but he's smart enough to know if he nibbles out a little at a time, he'll take it away. Amen. Uh, but we're not even going to let him nibble any on our word of God and get it down in your soul man get it in it becomes alive it becomes a weapon against the enemy because you can say my God heals Lord told me go call for the elders of the church the elder church come anoint me before and the prayer of faith will save the sick and you can just get it down inside of you and you can uh, make yourself believe that uh, 28 uh, 528 I'll get there in a minute uh, 28, 28, where is that? It says, For she said, If I may but touch his, his clothes, I shall be made whole. We've got to do something. I know the Lord can heal him. He had to do something. Do you remember the blind, people, blind guy sitting on the side of the road? Blind man, bum. He had to get up. He had to do something. He hollered out. And they told him, shut up. Yeah. It's because you're going to get something, Lord. Ain't nobody say, oh, oh, yeah. Keep hollering. Keep hollering. They told him, shut up. The ones that were following Jesus. I mean, probably one of the disciples even yeah. told him to shut up. He said, but, but we want everybody to discourage us. Discourage when you join something from the Lord, somebody said, oh, shut up singing, Winfrey. Don't you sing anymore. Well, singing is what you're going to get you what the Lord wants. Come on. What the Lord wants to give you. And, and that's the only way when you grow is somebody pushing us down. And then we're strung up under it. No, you're not tired to make muscle, boy. You do my uh, D2 is uh, David Neil Summers or Robbins. Boy, he just come out of the Marines. He come down to my house in Arizona. And I had one of them home gyms. I go in the home gym and I was pressing my body weight and he just thought he'd get in there and do it. Well, he'd been exercising with her, but a different way. But he got that thing. He's six foot four, weighs about 210. He went, Grandpa, you can't do this. Well, that's exactly what the old devil wants to tell you. You can't do certain things. But enough pushing down, you raise enough. And enough pushing down, you raise enough. And I just kept doing that. Yes, I can. I weigh and, about 167 or 168 pounds uh, fully dressed. I weigh about 162 uh, uh, in my gym clothes. And I can actually press that much. Oh, you say you can't do it. Yeah. Little at a time. I started out with 35 pounds. <laughs> uh, you keep adding work a week and add a pound. Well, what the Lord is trying to do right here is just work it out. So now she just said, if I can just do this, if I can just raise 35 pounds, if I can just raise 36 pounds, uh, and, and that's the way we need to do in this Word of God, if I'm just trusting for this, <clears throat> uh, it's okay to trust for that. Uh, I, I encourage you. To thank God for finding your car keys. I encourage you to thank God for finding the sugar bowl somebody oh, lost in your hand. So you thank God for that. You're building muscles. You're building muscles. Don't wait to hear your cancer. Thank God. You'll probably never get it healed. Start thanking God for whatever it's going on. Thank God, sunshine today. Thank Come God, seen a, a bird fly. There's a lot of Amen. people who never see the bird. Amen. We live in a place there wasn't no birds. There's a country without birds. Some people just take them for granted. I like birds. I like hearing them singing and everything. So, I like a bird. Uh, I just want to get on down. See, where was that? 28? She, she touched his garment. And, in the, and then there's a big crowd around. And, uh, and this is what the Lord wants after you 
after you get something from the Lord, and she had touched his garment, and she'd been made whole after being sick for uh, several years. The numbers there are somewhere. But for several years, how many? Twelve. Well, Twelve years she'd been sick with this issue of blood. And he asked Simon, who touched? He said, my Lord, you asked me, who touched you? And this big a crowd around? Yeah. And she came and told him all the truth. Yeah. That's what the Lord wants from us is the truth. Yeah. Don't hide Amen. down. She could have cowered down because, man, there's a press of people around her. And here just a little... I can see her real skinny and barely could walk after being bleeding for 12 years. I yeah. mean, she was pretty. And, and, then, and then she came and said, it's true, Lord, it was me, and told him all the truth. You need before you can tell the Lord the truth. Even after you get healed, if there's something you have done in your past and you know it, because God does heal people that is not straightening up and down with Him, because I've been healed before when I know it, I wasn't even Stephen with Him. But he, you need to go ahead and start telling Him all the truth. You need say, Lord, I didn't like that preacher. Or, Lord, I didn't like that song. Lord, learn me like that song. When I was a kid, I despised liver beyond a measure. You just couldn't make me eat liver. I fed it to the dogs. I sticked it up under the table leaf. Whatever I had to do, I could not. I put it in my pocket. I could not eat liver. I would do like this and let it go down my sleeve. But later on, guess what? Man, it become a real special meal. Luke and make liver gravy and, and onions and all that and man I love it now some people still don't eat liver I'm sure but as you go learned to li I like liver well these things the Lord wants us to do is building our bodies up with the word of God and the more of the flesh we get off more of the uh, this world we get off by Lord buffing us up and he'll buff us yeah. and he'll buff us until we got to clean it up he can use us and our garments will become snowy white and the word of God is true and this is only a part of the message but I feel like right now that we have had the word of God enough to chew on for the rest of the day come back tonight chew on some more I don't know yes service tonight uh, go, go over to live more cook uh, uh, church and Brother Hinton's own church and, and get in there and get some more to chew on. But more we chew and more we'll swallow and more we let this take effect in our lives. And so I, what I minister to today is not in vain. The Lord will give you a chance for it stays over for you to grow a little bit. Amen. Somebody's going to buff you some today and that's when you'll be able to say true. <laughs> what is one of the reasons this guy hadn't seen me and I prayed for him, God just uh, beyond major testing, the whole family is happy. He had backslid, but he started praying, crying, and everything. His wife had wrote a story that completely 100% untrue with me. I mean, it was so untrue that I you just couldn't believe it. <laughs> and I said, Lord, what am I going to do about this woman? I mean, man, uh, uh, what am I going to do? I, I, I'm going to do whatever the Lord tells me, I think. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> he tell you he, he won't leave you without something to do if you honestly ask Him. And I'm in serious trouble. I'm asking Him. I've done drove now five hours to get to His house from my house. And I'm wanting to do some good work. I ain't wanting to waste that time. He's, he said, when you go up there and hug her up, tell her, ask her to forgive you. Mm, I ain't, okay. ain't done nothing to her. Man, she did it to me. Yeah. It could have, um, um, I went over and I hugged her and I said, forgive me. She started bawling. <laughs> well, isn't that wonderful? Sometimes Amen. we just got to swallow our pride completely. And that's what I did. I swallowed my pride. It didn't hurt me, but it helped two people out. Amen. Two people that I was thinking is in a backslidden condition. And now they're crying and praying and seeking the Lord. I think that uh, your pastor, I invited myself, I do, because he says, you ever buy? Tell me, I'm the kind of preacher don't wait too very long. I'll invite myself. I invite myself out to eat with you. If you tell me, you got to come over to my house someday, don't do me that way if you don't believe it. Because I'll, I'll tell you, I'm free this afternoon <laughs> and come over and eat with you. Uh, I've been by a lot of people that was just, that wasn't telling the real truth. So I know they wasn't when I, when I did it. I did it just to get some of that uh, stuff polished off of them, get some of that <laughs> new out. Now, the Lord has got the Word of God and He comes forth every day and I know your pastor preaches good. I listen to him once a month with his messages. I listen to his three songs to four songs he put on there. Uh, 
the song's over again. I'm trying to learn to play the keyboard, and I'll set that thing down. And I was trying my best to learn. The Lord worked a miracle for me to learn what key that dude's in. I can't hear her. That don't give no excuse, does it, Winford? You just do something else. Well, I had got one of them things like Winford got on his guitar. I just put it up against my uh, monitor. I got a big old monitor in my library. And turned the thing up, and first thing you start out, there it is. It's A. <laughs> there it is, a G. Man, I can go from there. I might miss a change the first time, but I played through with your song several times Amen. on my piano. Do, 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 or keyboard that I got from uh, KJ. And uh, I can see coming down the street at this lock on the door of the church. Of course, we know that. No, this, this wasn't no little lock. This is six foot lock. <laughs> and the devil is putting a vision out there that there's a lock on it. You know why? He don't want nobody in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this great big open sign or something. I don't know what you got out there. But the devil is telling people this is off, off the. Uh, it can't come in, no trespassing or whatever that is. You know why? Because it's getting fed. If people are getting fed in here, the devil don't want you to get fed. Yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. getting fed in here. So don't worry about that uh, 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 the block out there. Because the enemy's got on Let's rebuke that thing in Jesus' name and keep on shouting. If you want to, and I'm sure the town will let you, you can put a little sign out there right where, right where the park, uh, people parks at says today or 9 o'clock or something. Appertisement's important. I've got a big, I put a sign up a 4 by 8 over top of my door in the name of the church. That wasn't good enough. I went out on top of that church and got uh, four, eight sheets of plywood, put them up this way. And in Texas, that's hard to keep down, but they've got wind all the time, not just two or three uh, days and quit. They don't ever quit. And uh, I bolted it down good and, and got it going. And I believe in appetite. And they said, well, we need to get, uh, there's a, a bypass 300 yards from us. So I went and got me a plastic pipe, about six inch plastic pipe, PCV, PVC, PVC pipes, that thick stuff called 80 gauge, thick as that finger. And I put a 27 foot cross out of that thing. It doubled. The pipe, two pipes coming up, two going out there, two, two coming back, and it doubled. And man, everybody in town, I go and see hardware stores there where they ask me where I'm from. You know, I'm going to tell them I'm pastor. Oh, yeah, that's where a white cross is. So everybody in town is knowing I got a white cross out there. Yeah. So appetize, what do you do? Because the devil's trying to put a lock on your appetizement. He you can't get you on getting out onto the uh, CDs and stuff. But he'll stop people from coming in. They absolutely want to come in. As Wimper said, how many times did you go around this church? About eight or ten times. See, there's a lock on that church until he went around uh, the twelfth time or whatever. <laughs> so let's keep on praying, seeking God, and the Lord will bring, us, bring things to us. And today, when somebody buff you a little bit, say something to you, don't get aggravated. They're helping you. They're your friend. They're making you grow in the Lord. <laughs> and if you have to apologize to somebody you didn't do nothing to, you're growing in the Lord because I come out of our feeling like a million dollars. Yeah. And even when the guy threw it off on my car, I come out of our feeling like I'm the luckiest guy I can drive a car down the road because I've got a good car with air condition, starts good, stops good. And uh, gets 49 to 51 miles to gallon on gas. You couldn't beat that. Amen. So get your pluses out of whatever's going on. This time I'll turn back over to your pastor. Amen.